Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Raiding from Classic to TBC, it's been quite a mix up in atmosphere. In Classic, it was all about stacking as many buffs as possible, the highly enjoyable sense of paranoia of teleporting back to your capital with those dispellable buffs intact, finally managing to sneak your way into a raid via being summoned behind a wall by an army of level 20 something characters with variations of the name Summoning Bot X, and then demolishing the bosses before they got a chance to do anything. It was an experience, shall we call it. Moving into TBC, Blizzard culled some of the more degenerate activities players were getting up to. No longer could you stack all the world buffs, their intent for being a fun reward had been taken way further than ever envisioned. 40 man raiding stopped, never to be seen again, and many specs that have been warming the bench for the past two years were now in super high demand. All very cool stuff, but Blizzard were not done there. Moving into Wrath, the raiding scene underwent a bunch more changes, and today, I thought I'd go over some of the bigger ones, exactly what happened and how the changes affected raiding and raiders. Wrath actually changed a massive amount about the game. I feel there is more to cover here than vanilla and easily TBC in total, so let me know if there's anything that for you changed raiding big time in Wrath, but let's make a start. First of all, number one, raid wide buffs. Part of TBC that has arguably one of the biggest impacts on your performance will only ever be available for a select few raiders. It's not your loot or getting hit by bad mechanics or just plain RNG, it's your group. Many of the buffs that count towards your performance are party only. This creates an environment of the haves and the have nots. And for you to really have big numbers appearing on your screen when you press your buttons, you need raiding leadership that has decided that you really get to play the game in that particular week. I hope at least you get rotated into groups to push performance a bit every so often. In fact, high-end TBC passing is one-off, if not the cheesiest metas I have ever seen in WoW. Sure, every expansion has padding ads and stacking buffs on one guy, but how about we give the Shadow Priest, oh I don't know, free bloodlust, one power infusion, two innovates? Why not let a Warlock do well this week? Let's give them, say... Oh, I don't know, two innovates, two power infusions, and four heroisms. That seems fine, right? That should be a thing we can do. This is pretty high level stuff, and the only guilds who seem to regularly bother with this are the Chinese because they're just built different when it comes to competition, let me tell you what. But it's more than just elevating one guy to god status on any given week. It's the other buffs in TBC too. Your Totem of Wrath and Moonkin aura. That alone is 8% spell crit and 3% spell hit for your group. That is enormous. The 3BM Hunter, 1 Feral, 1 Enhanced group are getting assured. 9% flat damage, 5% physical crit, and 10% attack power. Again, this is so much that only that group is getting. And then there's the more support classes that usually never see the light of these groups as they just don't perform as well or don't benefit from the buffs as much as others do. This changes in Wrath. Nearly every single buff is now either party or raid wide, depending what kind of group you're in. But you should know that only the most powerful buff from each category will be active. Here is Wind Fury Totem baseline, 16% melee haste. Yes, big F for Wind Fury Totem. They should have kept the extra attacks, it was so much cooler. Let's say you also have a Frost Death Knight in the group with the talent improved Icy Talons, which gives 20% melee haste. In this instance, only Icy Talons will apply to your party or raid. Heroism or Bloodlust is also raid wide too now. The hero stacking degeneracy of TBC was a bit much in my opinion. Fun, don't get me wrong, especially when you're benefiting from it. And it gave you a choice of which group you wanted to hero when. But honestly, I can't think of a single time so far when you don't just full send every single hero you've got at the same time. In Wrath, it gave you a greater degree of ease, making sure you're picking up all of these necessary buffs, whichever ones they may be. Everybody gets to play with the vast majority of the buffs. There are still one or two outliers like power infusion or hysteria but it's no longer the case if you have support groups with your ret and arms warriors and so on and then your big pumper groups with your elementals and warlocks as it is in tbc some classes known for their niche utility did suffer for this however as when there's a choice of two dps that can bring the exact same buff one of them the majority of the time will be better. And this brings us on to number two. Bring the player, not the class design philosophy. It began for real during Wrath of the Lich King, though it's been attempted many times over the years. You may not think it worked at the time, but it was what Blizzard was going for. Here's an article from 2009 discussing a post from Ghostcrawler on the same topic, saying the rigidity that came with the Sunwell is one of the reasons that development has taken this direction. The motto sparked high hopes, and not all players are convinced that the implementation has been successful. So Sunwell in the Burning Crusade was when Back in the day at least, things were tuned up way more than had ever been seen before, and people really began to think if we do want to beat these raids, we need to bring XYZ buffs, which 
at the time they could only ever get from certain classes though it ended up just for the most part being stacked shamans and have everybody get leather working for drums in wrath of the lich king they say classes are designed so that many necessary buffs such as replenishment can be acquired through a variety of classes rather than just one good example to show off here so replenishment imagine vampiric touch but weaker but for your whole raid so it's pretty good sometimes you don't really want to miss out on a buff like this for example so where can we get it a talented frost mage water elemental a priest casting mind blast on a target with vampiric touch a rep Halley's judgment spell or a survival hunter casting a whole bunch of different abilities that on top of all the other things each of those individual classes and specs can bring so we can bring the class not the player when we want to get this specific buff also they say on the bright side ghost crawler confirms there is no current trend where certain classes are being shunned out of raid spots and that classes that used to be ignored by raid leaders in bc are now working competitively alongside their raid mates which hmm maybe it deserves its own discussion there are still optimal meta comps in wrath of the lich king of course there are out of those four classes i just listed that give replenishment one of them just does more damage and offers other important buffs too at least in late game wrath of the lich king that's the rep pally but at least there is technically more choice to go around your raid and you will be getting all the buffs as a baseline now not as part of a specific group number three attunements they're gone mount hygel and black temple for me at least are the last true set of attunements isle of qualdenas took some time to fully open but it was a server-wide event i like to think of it as war effort light attunements were cool they gave you a story around the raid they gave you motivation to go there and they felt satisfying to complete like your tying loose ends up but with an ever-growing player base which they had at the time it was a barrier that patch after patch they kept having to tear down and remove and in tbc classic they are nerfing everything as soon as they can reasonably do so so they can get people into raiding content faster than ever before wrath of the lich king had no achievements at all you could just hop into whichever raid as it was available and that's going to be fantastic news for all the totally legitimate gdkp runs out there the only content that took time sort of to get into other than gearing was the icc plague wing and beyond which was staggered upon release so long as you could get over the player made hurdles like link achievement and watch your gear score number four speaking of doing any raid you want whenever and there being no achievements wrath of the lich king was the time of the flavor of the month re-roller for a reason a phrase which i feel as though has absolutely disappeared in world of warcraft during wrath i played among other things a mage a death knight a shaman a bit of rogue too but my priest was the main character it was really easy to re-roll with new patches believe me and just because we're going to launch on 3.3.5 does not mean you won't see people re-rolling during the expansion believe me among the private server big brains there's definitely a consensus that certain classes change dramatically between tiers and go from kind of average to absolutely insane and on my shadowlands account i have a perfect time capsule of a mage from wrath of the lich king who's been squished to level 30 now but i just never carried on playing them beyond that oh and of course i rolled a horde tune mainly to pvp and wrath of the lich king years of playing a human shadow priest led me to making the choice at exactly the wrong time funny how not knowing anything made me not care at the time either this guy was absolutely pumping arcane during tier 7 a total chad in the pug scene and then would hop in some battlegrounds to hit people with the sheer power of wrath of the lich king frost mage right to carry on with this mage raiding however in the guild by midway through the expansion not playing Playing fire anymore would kind of be trolling and by ice crown citadel arcane mages have just disappeared off the meters and fire has risen to near the top warriors for example continue their trend of godlike scaling again off to a relatively slow start but by the end of the expansion with all the armor pen scaling they can hit they become a top performing dps in wrath there's more ways to gear quickly than ever before the normal mode dungeons are easy as are the heroics and you can queue into them from wherever you want thanks to the lfd system we have badges we have the vault of archivon which gives you a chance each week at some very easy to get loot we have revamped anixia later which also drops very good gear everything combined here sped up the gearing ladder considerably catch up was a lot more aggressive in wrath now there's always been catch up your zg aq20 and then on to tbc badge vendors zulaman the isle of Qualdenas, and so on but in wrath the lich king it became a thing each patch new major content patch new badge new gear better catch up dungeons eventually in trial of the champion in 3.2 and then pit of and forge of souls and then eventually halls of reflection after 3.3 as well if you wanted the freedom to hop between classes and specs it was never easier than wrath of the lich king
And finally, number five, the raid format, something which I just talked about recently because it's quite a complicated topic in its own right if we really delve into it. There was something that changed with raiding every single tier. And in TBC at the moment, we only have our 25 man raid and then our 10 man raid, which is at the moment Karazhan and later will be joined by Zulaman. On top of more ways to gear in Wrath of the Lich King, this opened up new difficulty levels for more entry level players to really get their feet into the door for raiding. And then later on for the more hardcore players, hard modes were added to Alderwar, and then we had a formal heroic mode introduced from Trial of the Grand Crusader and then Ice Crown Citadel after that. And moving from TBC into Wrath, it's a much nicer decision than the one you had to make at the end of Classic, where you had a choice between calling 15 of your raid members or trying to set up a second raid group. Overall, there is a lot that changes between the expansions. For me, I think the point I'm looking forward to most is the additional level of challenge that Wrath of the Lich King will offer and Demonology Warlock during Wrath, which is a pretty damn cool spec. And I'm definitely not salty they took demon form away from Warlocks to give to Demon Hunters not even a little bit. As mentioned earlier, if you've got any other things which change Wrath of the Lich King raiding dramatically for you, do drop them down below and maybe I'll revisit this later on. That's about everything though. As always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in and I shall see you all in the next one very soon.